Oh my gosh. Hello, my lovelies. I'm going to make an update video today because, <laughs> and it's blinding. Oh my goodness, the sun is bright. Mommy. Oh, she's crying. Look, my dad. Look. No. Come on, Dice. Dice, Luna. Oh, she's crying. Okay. She's crying because she wants her sister. She's like, where's Romy? And I told her she's coming. She's out with her friend. They went. Um, it's a beautiful day. As you can see, the sun is there. And Nellie's like looking outside. And Emil is right here. They just woke up from their nap. It's a little after 6.30. See if I can do this here. It's a little after 6.30. And which means it's not gonna be it's not it's gonna be kind of a late night today. I think I'm gonna have to pause and continue a little later. What? Hello Nelly. Hello Nelly. There's Emil. Say hi. Hello. Say hello Emil. Hello Emil. Oh, da ist Emil. Da ist Emil. <lacht> Emil, that's you. Und da ist die Mama. Und da ist die Lola. Oh. <lacht> da ist die Mama. Und da ist Emil. Oh. Und da ist Lola. Und da ist Emil. Und da ist die Mama. <lacht> oh, und da ist Nelly. Nelly? Emil? Mama? Nelly. 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 Okay, I'm going to try maybe to give you an update. Maybe if they let me. <laughs> okay. I'm actually really happy because I had my period. You want it? You want it? No. Okay, we're going to pause this. So, I had my period. Oh, about, I think I'm on cycle day six or seven, which, okay, I'm thinking maybe there's a chance. There's no. The, no, maybe not there's a chance. No. I do hope so, Lola. There might still be a chance. Oh, look, I'm glowing. Look at this. It's so cool. Um, there might be a chance for a natural no, transfer. No. So I've changed a few things. Um, it might only be like a one-time thing because it's normal in perimenopause to miss periods and then they come back and then you miss them and they come back. But we only need one ovulation for a natural cycle because the, the studies show that there are better chances when you do a natural cycle. Uh, faster, 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 faster. So mm, it just feels good. And I'm tracking everything right now just to kind of see where I'm at. I'm taking my temperature. I've also changed a few things, lifestyle. I'm going out more again. This winter was really like I sat a lot. I worked so much and I was just at my office sitting on the chair all day long. I am taking time off my work time. I just have less time to work now. So while my babysitter's here, I'm going outside. Also, the weather is getting a little nicer again. So I've been actually... I, a couple times I put them in the bike trailer and I just, you know, I go with my bike and I go all the way through the forest. I do like an hour bike ride. It's an e-bike, but still there's quite a bit of pedaling because it goes very steep up the hill. So, oh my goodness, I'm trying to dodge the sun. Oh, dodging the sun. This is really hard. So, um, I think there we go. So, this is good moving and working out i have been doing some really cool kettlebell workouts i got that 10 kilo kettlebell a few months ago and i haven't used it a lot but i like there's these really cool workouts that i found they're like there's a, there's a 15 minute one and there's a 30 minute one today i went for kind of a short walk um run i went for a, like a 25 minute walk this morning and then i went for a 15 minute run and I did some stretching and then tomorrow I'm due for my 30 minute kettlebell workout. It's also supposed to rain tomorrow. And I was gonna go out with a bike with them today, but it's almost six o'clock now and they just slept until just a few minutes ago. And so I'm, I guess this today, I'm not gonna go out with a bike, but that's another way to actually get a workout in 
without having to take time off my work time when the weather is good enough and in the summer they can actually take their nap in that bike trailer it's pretty cool i might show you sometime uh, when you know maybe next time i'll take my phone with me and i can show you the bike and the trailer and that setup and how that what how that works so i had my period i'm tracking everything also i'm like it's not like i ate non-healthy but i've been in the habit like for the I'm really ever since they started eating i've been in the habit of like so that nothing goes to waste i always eat what's left but i can't do that because they always leave stuff all the time all the kids leave stuff all the time so i can't just keep eating all the stuff that three kids leave you know like left over or just don't want to eat it anymore i used to always be like okay i'll just put it in my mouth and eat it so i'm telling myself no i don't have to eat this um, and I am taking time now to actually eat different food. So they like, you know, pasta and rice, more carb heavy, but I want to be more protein heavy. So I have been making food for me different from what I'm making for the kids. Um, I actually just, I am boiling some, boi uh, boiling some bone broth and, you know, eating eggs and greek yogurt and like putting my nuts and seeds like i always did but i am really cutting out the the refined carbs i didn't eat a lot of that but i'm trying to be more diverse in my nutrition so whenever i eat a meal i try to put a lot of different things in there so you know like even get last yesterday i had like a big salad bowl with um salmon on top i i um i just um fried up some salmon and it was so good and then I make eggs a lot so that's good also I'm more intentional about drinking more it's not like I didn't drink enough but I just feel like I also have stopped drinking coffee that was really hard the first couple days not I didn't feel I used to only drink one single cup of coffee every day but I'm I've decided for now I'm just gonna cut it completely and I'm just gonna go back to just drinking herbal teas and my Roy Boys latte. So no caffeine, um, which actually the effect it has had was like, I actually have a deeper sleep at night. I do have to admit, I do sleep more deeply and they have been sleeping quite well. Um, I don't sleep on the foot end anymore now. I sleep in the middle and they sleep on the left and on the right. Um, Lola is on my right and Emil is on the left. And it seems like they have a much better sleep that way when they're like right beside me. And it doesn't bother me. I just try to like, she has to be all the way on that side. And I like kind of, um, I kind of slide him over all the way to the other side so that I have enough space. And I also still have my body pillow. Cause if, you know, yes, when it works out and I do get pregnant, then I'm gonna have another newborn. And I don't know if at that stage they're gonna be okay with like just being in their own beds. Not sure yet. And if not, it's, I think it would still possible even just to have a newborn because we have like my big bed and then there's another, I might show you in just a little bit. Um, there is a bed beside my bed. So actually Amy kind of, once he falls, falls asleep during the night, he kind of just works himself over there into that other bed that's right beside my bed. Um, so it's right adjacent. So it's like one, one surface. Um, another update. Oh, and the clinic. Yes. The clinic I have basically, I'm still waiting for them or like on something for the paperwork because there, there has, something has to be signed and we have to go to the notary and they say like the way they want it done. I can't do it like this in Germany because in Germany they do, they do certain things. They don't do that unless you are at least 30 weeks pregnant. And since I'm not even pregnant yet, there are certain things they won't do yet. Like, you know, like do like sign all the paperwork for the child, which it does in Germany here in the law. It's like you can't sign the paperwork unless the child is about to be born. So checking on that. And um, I have an appointment at the end of April. Didn't get an appointment any sooner than that to have like all the tests and like to have that ultrasound for you know my OBGYN is going to have the baseline ultrasound let's hope there's another cycle um, that comes and yeah so that's all rolling I'm hoping for May I'm hoping for the transfer to be in May which <laughs> that's kind of crazy because when I had the transfer for the twins I that was also in May so if I do have a May transfer and it does end up working out it's going to be another probably 
mm, January maybe or February depending on how you know like when in May okay another update um moving to Texas yes it's all gonna happen it's planned um, probably when the baby's about a year, maybe not even a year old. Maybe we go before that. I don't know. I have to see what it feels like, if it all works out. Like, we, there's still a lot of open things here. Um, we are going to the States, and we are going to the Dallas-Fort Worth area because I have a lot of friends there and um, things going on. Um, I have officially um, created a Texas LLC uh, for my business. Um, I have an existing business, but now it's also like we have just started a texas llc so that i can start investing excuse me in my business um, and that counts toward the visa mm -hmm. i'm going for an e2 investor visa since i already have a company and i'm gonna have people working for me um pretty good chances that i'll get it so that's the plan i'm working on all of that and um like i said it's all a process it's gonna it's not gonna be in the next few months that this is gonna take a couple years so um really we want to go sooner than here now we're both on the frame we want to go sooner like romy is like she so wants to go she has never been to texas she has been to the u.s but she has never been to texas but she so wants to homeschool she would give anything to get out of school here I mean, it's not the learning part, it's the school part of things. She, she's always been, you know, like, just handling all the social stuff there. It's, it's, it's always been hard for her, and it causes her a lot of stress. It has been, ever since first grade, she's had a lot of stress. And yes, I try to help her cope, and there are things that I can help her with, but there are things that are just a matter of maturity, and I feel like I should have the option as a parent if I feel like it's not good for my child to pull him out of school and just to do even for a you know, temporary, you know, temporary thing to homeschool her. It might be temporary. And even after maybe being homeschooled for a while, she will come to the realization that maybe she does like school um, if she tries it out. And maybe the system in the U.S. is just a little different. School is quite different in the U.S. than it is here. Um, but then again... This is my opinion, and this is me personally. I want my kids to be influenced by me, mostly. And some of the things they teach them at school is just, oh, I'm sorry, it's just not, it's not what I want them to learn. I mean, even politically, some things, it's like, it's not unbiased at all. It's like what their curriculum sometimes, it's like, that is so biased. I'm like, this is not neutral. This is like almost telling them what they're supposed to um, believe in what they're supposed to, you know, what, what, what are you supposed to do? What's good? What's bad? And this, this party is good. And this party is bad. It's all like very leftism here in Germany. And I, I don't know. It's, it, it's not teaching anyone to be particularly tolerant except, and I'm not going to get into that when it comes to like wokeness and all that, then we are all supposed to be tolerant. But when it comes to other things, it's like so intolerant. Um, so I personally would like my kids to be influenced mostly by me and my values. And at an older age, they are more firm in what they, what their values are but they're, when they're young. I mean, we had a good time because when COVID hit, it was the best thing for her. She could stay home and schools were closed for, I don't know, almost three months or so. <laughs> So we did all the stuff at home. It was extra work for me, but... <coughs> Mama. Yeah, you want to go? Um, oh, my big little belly. <laughs> um, but it was the best thing for her. There we go. Baby. Baby. You want milk? You want another milk? Donkey. There we go. Yeah, they have like in the afternoon, they have their milk. Other than that, they drink just water, really. Um... But, you know, after they have their nap, it's like, it's a nice little, you know, we always do this, like, they wake up and we cuddle and they drink their milk. We watch some TV and then I hopefully I can get some things done. This is my update. I'm going to upload this now, unedited. And I really actually want to do 
I actually do want to do more vlog style videos and I've thought about enlisting Romy to help me do this and she could kind of work for me like this um, you know it's like she gets she, basically I buy her whenever she wants something I buy it for her but I want her to be more aware of okay this is like I'm making some money and then I have this amount of money and this is the amount of money I can spend and I have to kind of Mm, I kind of have to budget with this and I want her to kind of understand that it's not endless. Well, we've done things like that, but ever since the twins, I didn't have a lot of time to really focus on things such as these, you know, with her. So, um, oh, isn't that, that is the cutest belly in the world. Like, I wish I had a cute belly like that. I, I think I have a cute mommy belly. So <laughs> I am working out, so it feels good. It's all about being healthy, and I would like to lose a few pounds before I get pregnant. So probably I have about a month and a half or so before the transfer, and hopefully, I really do hope we could use a natural cycle. And if we can't, then that's just what it is gonna be. But I have, I just started watching all my old videos again like all my pregnancy updates when I was pregnant with the twins. And I almost forgot this, but it is true. There are studies that have shown that um, when you compare a, like a modified natural cycle, which means it's all natural, um, you have your ovulation, and which means you also have a corpus luteum, which pro it, it's much more than just progesterone, there are, there's more involved. When you do use that and you just use the trigger shot in order to time the ovulation, properly so that you know when you did ovulate and then there's a transfer um, a week after trigger the studies actually say that hypertension is um, there's a higher risk of hypertension for the medicated cycle so all the way even if you you know you don't keep taking the hormones Basically, in the first trimester, that's when it's really important to take all the hormones when you do a medicated cycle. But when you have a natural cycle or even a modified natural where basically it's just the trigger shot. Other than that, everything is natural. Having that corpus luteum does things. It, 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 there's more involved than just the progesterone. Also, when you have a corpus luteum, you can just take the vaginal progesterone if you don't have a natural ovulation, you're gonna have to do the POI, the progesterone and oil, the shots, which sucks. I didn't have to do them last time, but every like all the videos I've watched, it sucks. It basically, if you have to give yourself a shot every single day and it, it gets very sore, if I could avoid that, I would, and natural is always better. But again, we will see whatever my body does it does i'm gonna do everything from now on to like support as much as i can taking all my supplements and it really has helped like taking that tr the, the trio my i take the maca ashwagandha and vitex that's my herb trio a trio that i take and i also take turmeric as a capsule because really just taste wise i can't put tons of turmeric every day in all my food it doesn't really fit every time every day it does not go with everything but the capsule is great i also i'm thinking about maybe taking the cinnamon capsule again because it does even out your blood sugar levels but maybe i really don't actually need it because the way i'm eating now and and the way i'm doing my nutrients it doesn't really cause it. really i have zero symptoms of any like menopausal things i had hot flashes for a couple weeks or even longer and then i started taking the trio and i started changing a few things and it completely disappeared and um, you can prolong perimenopause and you can even have some good ovulation even in perimenopause so it has not been even close to a year so it's been like four months um let's see i don't remember mm, four or five months October, November, December, January. Uh, five months. So it has been five months since my last cycle. But I'm not giving up. I'm watching the TV. It's so cute. Um, yeah, wrapping it up for today. Ugh. I could ramble forever, but I just... I won't spare you all the ramblings. Um, have an amazing day. And I will see you soon for more updates. Bye-bye.